So we're back here at Performance Research in Columbus, Ohio, following up on our Pontiac 455 build. If you've watched the videos previous to this, you've seen us pull this motor out of a running vehicle, run it on the dyno to get some base numbers on it, and then take this motor down to where you see it now. Now this motor has been tanked, which means it's been cleaned of all the exterior materials, removed all the schmutz, uh, it also removed a vast majority of the Pontiac blue paint. Otherwise, this block is pretty much as it originally was. Cylinders have been punched 20 over to match with the pistons we ordered, but otherwise everything else is still left to be done. The, the cylinder boring process will show you as well. We did find that this guy was a virgin 1970 455 block, which is good news. It's everything we really were hoping for. Your cylinder walls were a little bit tired, so compression was probably a bit down. Your seal against the cylinder walls was a little bit low. Otherwise, pretty much everything else we found was in pretty good shape. We are going to deck this block, so it's going to clean up the mating surface. We're also going to mill the heads to make sure that your mating surface between the head gasket is perfect. It'll also give us our optimal amount of compression. Now, we're going to show you this whole process, because what we wanted to show you here was, instead of just dropping off your motor at the machine shop and picking it up in a couple of weeks or months, and dropping it back in the hole, we want to show you everything that's behind the scenes. We want to show you the actual process that goes behind what's in a motor build. So everything from milling the heads, doing the valve job, fitting pistons, rotating assembly, setting up your bearings, all of that stuff, we're actually going to show you all of that behind the scenes. So hopefully this is something you're interested in. If not, you're watching the wrong video. So in this rebuild process, we're going to start with the heads. The heads are where you find most of your power. I'm going to walk you through the entire process step by step. On this episode, we're going to work just the heads. We're going to go through the entire machining process and assembly. The next episode, which is going to be the next episode you're going to see, is going to be just the bottom end, rotating assembly, and the block. The final part of this machining process, we're going to show you the final assembly as well as the dyno run to see what all our results are going to be. Stay tuned. There's a lot to watch. Upon inspection, after bead blasting the head, uh, both of them have been tanked. Um, they're pretty, they were pretty bad to begin with, as you could probably imagine. Um, we bead blasted them to get most of the carbon off, uh, so we can get a better look at the seats and uh, the uh, the intake runners, exhaust runners, chambers. Uh, a lot of times they'll be um, hitting, or a lot of times cracks. Um, that you would never see with the carbon packed in there. Um, so bead blasting them really uh, can allow you to see a lot more than uh, you normally would just by looking at them the way they are, that one is. Um, this particular set of cylinder heads is, what, I'm casting 76, mid-70s. Um, so they don't actually have hardened seats installed in them. They're, uh, they're just induction hardened, but they're heat treated uh, to harden the, the iron. Um, what we're going to do is actually put in a hardened seat by machining out what's here and uh, pressing in a new seat and machining the new seat to accept um, our exhaust valve. Um, but before we do that, um, we're also going to have to replace the guides. Um, there's a certain amount of clearance you want between the valve stem and the guide. And usually you get a little bit of play out of that. You need a little bit of room for oil. Um, what happens when they wear out, you end up with a lot more play than necessary. And a lot of times that can be caused by poor rock run geometry. Um, two pro issues um, when this happens is one, oil gets past them causing the motor to burn oil and smoke. Um, the other issue is that the valve can't dissipate heat as well and the valve will actually get much hotter than it should, eventually leading it to burn, which uh, obviously is not good. So uh, we are installing uh, spiral ID guides and uh, these set of iron uh, Pontiac cylinder heads. It went from uh, 3 eighths to 11 30 seconds. Here we go.
Okay, so uh, what we're doing is we're cutting down the tops of the, uh, the guides, as well as the original uh, bosses where the guides were. Um, and we're actually using a couple of spring shims as a stop so that we stop at the same height on all eight of them. Um, the remaining 120 thousandths can be used to locate um, a spring locator or a cup, whatever it is we're going to use. Um, and we're cutting the guide down to accept a, um, a Viton seal. This tool is making uh, two cuts simultaneously, one on the OD of the guide and then another one at the top of the guide. So we're actually trimming down the guide and cutting the OD of it to uh, 500 <coughs> thousandths uh, simultaneously. So like I was saying earlier, this tool makes two cuts simultaneously. We're cutting the OD of the guide, the OD of the iron lifter or guide boss, and the top of the new guide. And we're also chamfering the, the new guide as well. the guides that we just installed and trimmed, um, the Goodson Diamond Hone, um, they are tight, it's pretty typical, they shrink a little when you press them in. I've got one pilot that's exactly the, the diameter of the valve and one that's slightly larger that's going to give us the clearance we want, the oil clearance. Once our larger pilot goes through nice and smooth, then we're done. This is the one that's the size of our stem, of our valve. This one's just over a thou larger. It doesn't go yet, but the one on size does. We've got just a little bit more to go.
or 341 and a half thousand pilot here. Goes in as expected. If I didn't mix them up. Or one that's just over a thou larger. Nice and smooth. Our valve. New guides machined and installed and uh, diamond hung to fit. And uh, next step is to install hardened exhaust seats. This is our exhaust seat insert. And what we do is we go in, machine out the old cast iron, and the new seat gets pressed in. After installed it, we left cut in our three angle seat. We've got our guides machined and installed. Uh, next we're going to go in and we're going to machine out the cast iron for our new hardened valve seat insert. We've got a 90 degree carbide cutter. We're going to go down the depth of the new seat and less than the diameter, the OD of the, the new uh, insert. Once we get a rough cut, we'll slowly move outward until we have the press fit that we're looking for before we drive this guy in. So our pilot, as usual, tool holder, carbide cutter, And the sturdy is going to do the rest. Right now we're measuring the hole we just cut. Um, I already know it's small, too small. I mean, it's supposed to be small, but it's way too small. But I want to know exactly what the diameter is of it so I know how to adjust from here. What I'm doing here is moving the, the tool out to increase uh, the diameter of the cut, but I, I only need to go just a little bit, and I only want to come out a couple thousandths.
and our dial indicator is going to tell us exactly how much we're moving this out and that's right about a little less than two and we're going to try that and it's probably not going to be enough but we can always remove more we can't put it back So these guys are both spring-loaded. This is a telescoping gauge. These are both spring-loaded. This is a brake here to stop it. Basically what you're trying to do is get the ID of this machined hole we cut. And then we're actually going to measure this with the set of micrometers. This is all about feel. right there. So now we've got um, our seats machined out um, to the exact diameter that we want to achieve um, the proper press fit. Uh, for our new uh, valve seat inserts. There's two sides to these inserts. One has a chamfer on the OD, one has a chamfer on the ID. Chamfer on the ID is the top where your seat cut's going to be. Chamfer on the OD is the, is the side that goes into the head first. The process of installing these is actually pretty simple. Um, we have a tapered pilot. We have a collar that goes over the tapered pilot, the end of it. Our seat insert that we're going to install. Our guide here that uh, the OD of this is really close to the ID of uh, the center of this guy here. This centers up our seat so it's perpendicular with the guide, which is the way it's supposed to be. This groove here, tool over here fits over that. Seat gets pressed in. Gets pressed in until it bottoms out against the shoulder down here. And that's it. Okay, we got our seats machined and installed in our head. Um, we're going to rough in our three angles. Um, top cut, our seat cut, and the bottom cut simultaneously. Um, we can do that with our tool here. It has all three, and it will do them all at the same time. Um, I want to go in and just do a rough cut and see where we're at. Chances are we're going to have to go back and, and do a inside, another inside cut, a steeper one, to bring the inside, um, the idea of the guide, or the seat that we just put in, out. Um, so we won't really know where we're at until we, we do it. So uh, here we go. A lot of times when you're machining a new <coughs> valve seat, the bottom cut will be removing so much material on its own that uh, it can cause the tool to chatter. Um, and when that happens, uh, we correct that by uh, taking an individual bottom cut, usually 70 degrees, and remove that material first, and then we'll come back with the three angle cutter and do it again, and there'll be less load on the tool it's less likely to chatter.
inside 70 degree cut uh, to open up the ID of the seat that we just installed a little bit. Um, a little bit extra material there that we don't need. Um, and it'll help um, our seat cut on the final pass when we go to just touch it by reducing the amount of material that it has to remove. And uh, that material being removed in the first place is going to help with uh, flow just a little bit. So um, not 100% necessary, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay, so now we're, uh, we've just done our 70 degree inside cut. Um, that turned out nice. Uh, we're just going to go back. I just sharpened the, uh, the tool. Um, we're going to go through and, and we're just going to reestablish those three cuts that we roughed in earlier. Um, this isn't going to be a lot. Just basically come in, touch it. When I see it clean up, get off of it, and we're good to go. After this, we're 100% done with our um, valve job and seat installation on the exhaust side. After this, we'll tackle the intakes and then do the other head. Here we're uh, about to CC the uh, combustion chamber with the cylinder heads. Um, the issue was is we had too much volume. We can lower the, the volume of the chamber by milling the flat surface of the head. Um, we're also going to mill the deck surface of the block. Um, and the only other way to really fix this problem other than doing those two things is to order custom pistons, uh, which can be very costly. Um, so we've got more than enough material here to take off of the heads. Uh, I took 20 thousandths off the other cylinder head and checked it and we were just over 100 cc's, which is still too much. Uh, with the calculations we made, we want to be in the middle 90s. and. Um, I've taken 60 off of this, and we're going to see now exactly how much uh, area we've actually removed from the chamber. Um, there's 100 cc's of solvent um, here, so there's no reason that we should be over that at this point. Another issue we ran into, uh, when I initially cc'd the heads without milling them at all, I cc'd them using the original valves. Uh, the original valves are flat at the bottom. Um, we were a little confused when we CC'd the heads without doing anything to them. We got about 101 CC's. After doing it again with the new valves and milling 20 thousandths off the deck, we were at about the same number, which didn't make sense until we qu quickly realized that the new valves are dished and the old ones are not. Um, so therefore, we, we have to take uh, even more off the deck. That's why we're at 60 thousandths now. I don't think I want to go any further than that. Uh, wherever we're at here, we should be able to adjust with milling the deck. We've got 30 thousandths to play with um, with the engine block. I think we can get there uh, between doing this and milling the, the uh, engine block. So here we are about to uh, drain the solvent into the chamber. The uh, Valves are in place um, with a little bit of grease on the valve seats just to make sure that we don't lose any leaking through the, through the valves and obviously a spark plug in the spark plug hole. Any leakage here during this test is going to skew our results. So here we go. Twenty, thirty. That's forty. Halfway there. Thank you. 
90. We're getting close here. Now we want to be in the middle 90s, but I'll take anything under 100. Anything under 100 we can we can deal with. Again, this, this test isn't going to be horribly exact. Um, I don't expect all the chambers to be the same anyway. These heads are factory and as cast and machined from back in 70 whenever. We're just under 96 cc's, which is probably going to be just about perfect. So we milled quite a bit off of this. The 60,000 seemed to have done the trick. Uh, we're down to just under 96 cc's, which is exactly where I wanted it to be. Um, that gives us plenty to work with. Um, we are still going to have to deck the block, but we should do that anyway, just because it's old. And um, I'm not going to assume that it's flat either. If these heads weren't flat. Uh, I don't expect the block to be flat either. So um, we've got 60,000 taken off of this head. I'm happy with it. The other head, um, I'm taking 20 off that one. I'm going to go take another additional uh, 40,000 off that head, and we're going to repeat this test, and uh, hopefully we're right around the same number. Uh, this is the other cylinder head I was talking about uh, that I originally had taken 20,000 off, thinking that we were going to make a, a dent, and we didn't uh, because of the dishes and the new valves. Um, so the 60,000s we took off the other head did the trick, got us right in the mid-90s um, in terms of volume. So we're going to do the same thing to this head. Um, like I said, we've already taken 20. We're going to take another 40 here um, using our old Storm Vulcan uh, iron mill machine. Uh, it's an old machine, but they don't make them like this anymore, and this thing does a fantastic job. So um, here we go. I just set up to take another 3,000s off. We're doing this 3,000s at a time. So if you do the math, uh, this is making quite a few laps. To get to, uh, you know, to mill it down to 60 thousandths. So far, this pass will be eight thousandths, and we're just going to keep on going. Get our gear here, auto feed. When it's done, we'll let you know, and we'll go make another pass. All right, so we're all done with all the machining. Last thing left to do is all the assembly. So right now all of the hard work has been done. All of these pieces and parts just need to go in these freshly machined heads. <laughs> we are now assembling the cylinder heads. Uh, we have milled them. We've uh, replaced guides. We've repla re replaced exhaust seats, uh, done a valve job. Um, we had to take 60 thousandths off of the uh, uh, gasket side of the head to get the uh, combustion chamber down to 96 cc's I think was what we were aiming for um, and so therefore we had to take we had to mill the uh, intake side of the head as well to compensate cleaned ready to go we are now officially ready to put the valves in and uh, install the springs and seals and all that uh, the way this works is your valve goes in through the guide. You have your spring cup or locator. We've machined the cylinder head so that the cup fits around the guide just perfect. I mean, couldn't ask for much better than that. So that goes first. This is our valve stem seal. It slides over. This is our valve spring. 
it sits inside that spring pocket, which makes it keeps it in place. And this is the retainer. It goes on top. We compress the spring down until the retainer is below the keeper groove in the valve. We put our keepers in, and then we slowly release the, the spring back and the, uh, the, the spring and the retainer and everything are mechanically held in place by the, uh, by the keepers. Uh, first thing we're going to do is put all the valves in. Then we're going to set the head down, head gasket surface down, uh, install the seals, and then uh, the spring locator, spring retainer, and uh, the keepers. So here we go. And I think we're going to utilize the Alex Taylor lube uh, once more. Uh, I, I liked it. it it's uh, it, it feels like good stuff. We used it for the short block, so uh, we'll use it to loop the guides. Why not, right? You know, if they would have put it in a bottle that was a little bit more convenient to use, I would have helped out quite a bit. I like to twirl the valve as I'm putting it in also. I've already put lube in the guides, so you want the lubrication in the guide and then uh, I like to put a little on the valve stem as well just to make sure. In, twirl it in. Now after this is uh, somewhat of a tricky part because You've got to set the head down on the head gasket surface without the valves falling out. There's no seals on the valves that hold them in place. So you've got to be kind of quick. Spring cups. These need to go on first because once the seal goes on, these can no longer come off. I like to put a little bit of lubrication on the chimney of the guide to help the seal go on. Slide the seal over. This is a tool we made. It uh, doesn't look like it, but it's, it's precision machined. Um, the ID here fits right around the uh, the seal and you can push down on the seal without damaging it because it's only pushing on the outside where the I guess what you would call the structural integrity of the of the seal is. You can tap it on with the nylon hammer. And that's it. Do that 15 more times. Okay. Valves in, seals in, spring locators in place, spring, retainer. These are all of our keepers. Since these springs aren't extremely stiff, uh, I'm going to use this uh, air-powered spring compressor. It's just more convenient. Slide your keepers in, let it go, that's it. I know some people like to use white lithium grease or something like it to kind of help the keepers stick to the valve. They're cooperating for the most part, so I'm not going to do that. This air tool I'm using, I can use it because our spring pressure is uh, is pretty normal. We, we've got about maybe 130 pounds of pressure on the valve when it's closed. Um, our uh, higher performance race our higher performance race motors require a lot more spring pressure, which means the spring is harder to compress. And uh, 
we have another tool that we use to do those. Uh, this tool just simply doesn't have the horsepower to compress those uh, those stiffer springs. It's not uncommon to see race motors these days with seat pressures exceeding 300 pounds. But uh, this is a normal street motor and it's a flat tap with hydraulic cam and it's not going to see a huge amount of RPM anyway. But that's one head completed. This is our first head completed, ready to rock and roll. This thing is ready to bolt on the motor once the motor is ready. Here you have it, uh, cylinder heads are assembled, ready to rock and roll. They can bolt right on the motor when the motor is ready. Um, next thing we're going to do is finish that. we got to slide the camshaft in, degree that, uh, put the timing cover on, dampener, index the dampener, oil pump, uh, set up the pickup, um, oil pan, all that fun stuff. And uh, when, when we get that done, we'll be ready to bolt these on. And then we'll almost be done. Almost ready for dyno time. Almost. Good night. Um, we're going to wrap this one up as we are. We're already long-winded enough. So hopefully you guys have really enjoyed this one. Remember to like, subscribe, drop us a comment below, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode.